Hi, everyone. Um, I realise I'm the last thing standing between you all and lunch, so I'll try to keep this brief. Um, for those of you I haven't met, um, my name is Brad Desmond, and I'm the Assistant Coordinator with the Australian Seed Bank Partnership. Before I get started today, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands that we're meeting on today, um, as well as the lands of the uh, lands um, of which the partnership undertakes our work. So I'm here today on behalf of the Council of Heads of Australian Botanic Gardens, or CHARBAG, and the Botanic Gardens Australia and New Zealand, or BEGANS, to talk about how we're helping to fight myrtle rust in Australia using ex situ collections data. So as Angus described on Wednesday, um, oops, sorry. Yeah, as Angus described on Wednesday, we're in a bit of a war with myrtle rust. And we've heard during the week about a broad range of work that's underway to fight back against that. And that includes things like um, research, um, looking in, into plant and plant, uh, plant and pathogen interactions, preventing new strains from entering the country through biosecurity measures, and conservation activities um, like um, insurance germplasm collections. And that last point is why I'm here today. So species that are secured in ex situ or off-site collections usually have curated databases that contain really important information um, for conservation management activities. And we put a call out for that information to create the first countrywide stock take of Matasi insurance populations. This included information about seed, plants, uh, tissue culture, and any other forms of germplasm that were held. And our aim was to produce a baseline to understand how many species are currently present within ex situ collections and determine where the gaps are for future conservation work. So in order to do that, we worked with experts across academia, uh, botanic gardens, and seed banks to develop a survey. And with biosecurity funding that was generously provided by the Australian government, the survey was launched in September 22 and was open for around four months. So there were three general parts to the survey. So part one asked information about the organisations uh, as well as um, their experience with fighting myrtle rust. Part two looked at information about collections of those high priority Matasi species, and I'll talk about those soon. Uh, and part three sought information about any other Matasi collections that were held in their facilities. And I'm here today to share the results of that survey with you. But before I do, I want to say a really huge thank you to all of the institutions who provided their data. Um, I know from first-hand experience that providing information like that can be a long and arduous task, so we really do appreciate the willingness of organisations and their staff to provide that to us. So moving into the results. Looking at part one of the survey, we had 26 institutions provide their data to us, and that included at least one from every Australian state and territory. Uh, as well as institutions in New Zealand and in the UK that held collections of Australian Matasi species. Our respondents were largely the major state-based botanic gardens, uh, seed banks, nurseries, arboreta and universities. Um, we received over 40,000 lines of data, which was amazing, but also required a massive effort to harmonise and analyse. Um, we know that the data that we received isn't everything that's out there, um, because organisations either didn't have the capacity or the time to contribute, but what we do have uh, goes a long way to creating a bit of a baseline um, that we can only improve on. So if we jump into the outcomes of part one, uh, we asked institutions if they'd observed myrtle rust close to their facilities, and just under half indicated that they had observed it within five kilometres of their boundary. Um, Pleasingly, um, most facilities are actively monitoring for metal rust, either inside or outside their facilities. And this provides hope that they could respond rapidly to treat metal rust if it was detected and if they have the resources and expertise to, um, to do that. Um, of the 26 institutions that provided data, eight indicated that they're actively treating their collections for metal rust. And while that might seem low, um, it could be that just some organisations aren't yet experiencing the impacts of myrtle rust or the nature of their facilities like seed banks don't actually require active management. We also found that around a third of the facilities that, are respond that responded um, are going to receive some funds to support additional collecting in the future. And I'll talk about that soon. 
And we asked institutions if they are part of the Plant Sentinel Network. And we've heard a bit about that today, but if you're not aware, the Sentinel Network is an initiative where institutions provide um, information about incursions um, of plants and pests. And just under half of the respondents indicated that they're part of the network. Uh, so there's still some work to do there to get more facilities involved. So moving on to part two of the survey that looked at the high priority Matasi species. So as has been discussed over the last few days, the action plan uh, names some priority species and placed them into the categories on the screens there. That indicates the level of risk that myrtle rust presents to them surviving in the wild. From our survey, we found that a large proportion of those priority species are already represented in insurance populations in some form. So four of the five emergency species are represented, all of the very high and all of the World Heritage Area flagship species are represented and uh, 23 of the 27 uh, medium species are represented. And that equates to around 90% of the priority species under the plan um, already captured in ex situ collections. So unfortunately, the priority species that are listed there on the screen aren't present in any of the facilities that uh, responded. Um, and while that's a bit concerning, it provides valuable information about where the ex situ conservation efforts might be required in the future. And that's not to mention the further work that's needed to um, capture more genetic diversity of the existing collections that have already been made. We also wanted our survey to align with the Australian government's uh, Threatened Species Action Plan. And that plan includes a list of 30 priority native plants um, that will be the focus of recovery actions over the next decade. And of the 30 priority plant species, four are within the Mertesi family. And thankfully, the survey showed that all four um, are in ex situ collections. On the left figure, you can see the number and the source for each of the reported accessions for those four species. And on the right, you can see the number of facilities that hold material for those four species. So you can see the spread. Of the four, um, Rhodomertus cityoides has the largest number of accessions, and it's present in the most number of facilities. And that's likely due to the wonderful work that's being undertaken by the projects that were discussed today. If we look at all the information that was provided in the survey, we found that of around the uh, 2,700 Matesi taxa that are currently described in the Australian Plant Census, just over 2,000 of those are currently held in ex situ collections across the 26 respondents. And that represents about 75% of all the described taxa in the Matesi family which is a great baseline, um, but it also highlights that there's a lot of work still to be done um, to make sure that we capture the remaining 25%. Before I finish up, I wanna run through a few lessons learned through this process. So if this survey was to be conducted again, we'd aim for a time of year where, um, where staff aren't in the field undertaking those collections activities. Um, Springs, spring and summer is a particularly busy time for germplasm conservation practitioners, as I'm sure you all know, and we may have received more information if we timed that a little bit earlier. Uh, a survey of this time also requires a lot, a survey of this nature, sorry, also requires a lot of time, resource, resources and expertise to harmonise and analyse the data. Um, and in future, I think it should be scoped to include a dedicated data analyst. Lastly, the survey showed that only nine respondents uh, are funded to undertake additional ex situ uh, collections. And that highlights an urgent need for additional funding on a national scale if we want to have all the Matesi um, represented in insurance collections. So what's next? So after some additional analysis, um, we'll be producing a final report that we hope will help to inform the new threat abatement plan that's been spoken about. It will also support the implementation of the government's Threatened Species Action Plan. And our hope is that the results will inform prioritisation of future germplasm collection effort uh, for metal rust affected species, and also highlight the need for additional germplasm conservation activities in general. So in wrapping up, uh, on behalf of Charbag and Big Ends, I again want to thank the Australian government for providing funding for the survey, the National Myrtle Rust Working Group for helping developing it, and all the organisations who took a lot of time to provide their data to us. If you'd like to get in touch about any of this, feel free to contact us via the details on the screen. Um, thanks very much and happy to take any questions.
I've, I've got a question. Um, for the locations that are outside of the murder rust zone, is there any plan on trying to collect seed from any of those plants? Um, this was more of like a, an analysis of people, what people have already done. We don't actually know what a lot of them are doing in the future, yeah. but our hope is that providing this baseline will help more people in the future to be able to develop that list, yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, do we have any other questions for Brad? Hello, Kate. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I just had a comment actually, the Lemware BR for Black Oil Range, mm -hmm. um, I understand there is an ex situ collection um, with Brush Turkey Enterprises, so. Oh, amazing. Yeah, that's, that's great on the to know. Coast. Yeah. I might come so to contact, you in contact you for that. With them. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect, thank you. Thanks, Brad. Um, because this is kind of a, a fixed point in time, this um, project, is there any plans to kind of do this on an ongoing basis or have gardens be able to report into it so that that knowledge is continually being built? Yeah, that's the hope. Um, in the Threatened Species Action Plan, there are some, um, some targets around myrtle rust. So we're hoping that additional funding can be provided and it can be continued in the future to, to see how we're tracking. Yeah. 